Hi guys, so the Environment Secretary George Eustace made some interesting claims in an interview with Kay Burley from Sky News. He claimed that Joe Biden was getting his information on the Northern Arm Protocol from EU and Irish media. He, he then went on to say that the Northern Ireland Protocol in its current form risks undermining peace in Northern Ireland by harming the Good Friday Agreement. This argument is that there is an unsustainable situation when it comes to trade between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. George, George Eustace used to be a member of UKIP, just so you know. The, the provisions that we're putting forward, the proposals uh, we have, are actually all about safeguarding uh, peace, stability uh, in Northern Ireland and that Belfast Agreement. Mm. US President disagrees. Um, why is he wrong? Well, I think um, he's probably uh, at the moment just um, you know, reading the headlines, reading what the EU is saying, reading what you know, Ireland might be saying, which is that they would like the Northern Ireland Protocol uh, to work in the way that the EU envisaged. Okay, there are two problems with that. First of all, I highly doubt that Joe Biden is getting his, in his intelligence from reading The Guardian or a European newspaper. He's surrounded by experts and aides. I'm pretty sure that they're providing him expert advice. They're telling him what the situation really is. He's not reading the newspapers and coming to his own conclusions. Um, that's just ridiculous. Now, the second point is how the EU envisages this protocol. No, no, no. It's written down in black and white. It's not the EU has decided to do something and the UK has to go along with it. Both sides agreed to it. It's written down what you have to do. Now, isn't it interesting how the EU doesn't have a problem with the protocol, but the UK government does have a problem. And would it, it makes more sense for the EU to have a problem because the UK is not implementing the protocol. Now, I've talked about before, I don't know if this situation has changed because it's difficult to find out information about it, but one aspect of the protocol was for, t for the UK government to have permanent structures in place in Northern Ireland. Up to now, it seems they only have tempor temporary structures in place. So they're not upholding their side of the bargain. Another aspect was live data. The UK was supposed to provide live data through systems, tech, um, uh, technological systems, live data to the European Commission. They don't seem to be doing that yet either. Now, whose fault is that? Is that the EU's fault for asking too much? If it was written down and you say we are going to do it, then you have to do it. Um, we think he's wrong because the truth is that unless we have a sustainable solution that enables trade to continue between GB uh, and Northern Ireland, then we are going to have uh, issues and that itself would become a challenge to the Belfast It is not a challenge to the Belfast Agreement or the Good Friday Agreement. Trade is flowing. Now, trade has slowed down, but that's a consequence of Brexit. It's a consequence of the type of Brexit that George Eustace and Boris Johnson and the ERG wanted. As said on numerous occasions, none of this was necessary. If Boris Johnson had agreed with the European Union to maintain the entire UK within the single market and the customs union, then there would be no checks. There would be no need for a Northern Ireland Protocol. So the Northern Ireland Protocol is a consequence of the type of Brexit that people like George Eustace wanted. Actually, no. George Eustace wanted a harder Brexit. He used to be a member of UKIP. Nigel Farage's band. Okay. So they wanted an even harder Brexit than Boris Johnson got. You can't complain about the protocol. The protocol is the fire extinguisher. Brexit is the fire. Now, if you have an alternative, a better alternative to the fire extinguisher, let's hear it. But so far, you haven't actually provided an alternative. All you want to do is take away the fire extinguisher. Belfast Agreement. So those who believe, uh, as we do, in the, uh, the hard-won peace and stability in Northern Ireland have to make the Northern Ireland Protocol work on a sustainable basis. And that's why we have to revisit some of these provisions around the way it's interpreted. The way it's interpreted. It's not the way it's interpreted. It's written down. If it says you need to have permanent structures, there isn't some sort of interpretation there. You don't say, do, do you mean what type of permanent structures? Permanent in what way? <laughs> There's no interpretation here. You have to, the same when it comes to live data. You have to provide, but how, how much live? Is it very live or maybe a little bit past live? I don't know. Is it like, This makes no sense. 
there are aspects of the protocol which maybe can be delayed, uh, can be implemented in a different way, but that requires both sides sitting down and coming to an agreement. But it doesn't mean renegotiating the protocol. If you want to renegotiate the protocol, then you need to provide some sort of better alternative. But there is no better alternative. I still think that the UK government are trying to use the protocol as some sort of bargaining chip against the European Union, against maybe even the United States, saying, look, you know, give us a trade deal or we're going to damage the Northern Ireland Protocol, we're going to try to bring it down, we're to go and then, of course, that's going to harm peace in Northern Ireland. But that's a dangerous game to play because the Republicans and the Democrats in the United States, not the President, those, um, the representatives from those parties, want to see peace maintained in Northern Ireland. And they're not going to sign any trade deals if they think that peace is, un is at risk because of Boris Johnson wanting a trade deal so he can sell to the Brit to Brexiteers. Brexiteers are not considered, I'm sorry, in the United States. They don't care about them or their feelings. They care more about peace in Northern Ireland, thankfully. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?